Hello everybody and I welcome all of you to online study for you. This is a video on the pseudocode mock test. So this mock test can be used to prepare for companies like Capgemini and other companies which conduct pseudocode based examinations. And uh, before attending this mock test, it is advised that you go through our pseudocode course which you can buy here. So if you bought it already, you can continue to watch it. Otherwise, you can just go to your our website, online study for you dot in and head over to this premium video materials option. So here you're going to see all our courses. And this is our if you, you can see here, this is the Capgemini pseudocode one, which you can buy for 199 rupees, uh, which currently consists of 27 plus videos. This will be 28. So totally we'll have 30 videos. So you can buy this here and uh, you can watch all those in order to get good at pseudo codes and then you can continue and uh, attend this pseudo code mock test so let us start with the first question the first question goes like this how many comparisons are needed to sort an array of length phi if a straight selection sort is used and array is already in the opposite order so option a is 6 option b is 8 option c is 10 option d is 15 option e is 25 now what they're asking here is so if we want to sort an array of length n is equal to 5 and we are using a selection sort straight selection sort is nothing but a normal selection sort on an array we are using a selection sort and another important thing that we have to notice that the array is already in opposite order this means that if we want to let us suppose uh, make the array in ascending or uh, descending or uh, ascending order let us suppose i want to make my array like that so i have five numbers let us suppose 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 are these numbers my array should be my array is in this condition that means it is in totally opposite order so it is in totally opposite order means it is in descending order i want to make this to 1 2 3 4 5 okay this should be my goal now how many comparisons will i make so what do i do in selection sort algorithm is that in every iteration i'm going to consider the first element as already sorted okay let us suppose I will I will take a variable called min and I'll store the first element here. Here I'm not comparing. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this min with this four. Okay. If the value of this uh, way, way here, whatever the value of array is less than the value of min, then you're going to swap it. Since it is lesser than that, we are going to swap it. And what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, so this sorry this 4 remains here itself so this 4 comes here okay next we compare it with this 3 so since 3 is less than 4 this 3 comes here again we are comparing with this 2 so what happens since 2 is lesser than that uh, lesser than 3 2 comes here again we are going to compare this 2 with 1 so 1 is lesser than that so the value of min is going to be 1 at the end of this iteration first iteration so since this last value 1 is uh, this value is less uh, lesser than the value already we have here what we're going to do is we're going to take 1 here and put it here and we're going to take 5 and put 5 here remember 1 2 3 4 we already made four comparisons okay next what we're going to do is this is sorted okay now this part is sorted whatever is there on the left now what we're going to do is we're going to take 4 as min and we're going to compare it with these three elements. So okay, we will not do the whole sorting process but what we want is the number of comparisons. So we consider 4 as sorted and we'll compare it with these three elements. So what we'll do is we'll, we are doing three more sorting operations, comparison operators that is this, this and this. Now what happens is in selection sort your 4, uh, your 2 will come here and your 4 will come here essentially okay so now this part is sorted now what you're going to do is you're going to consider 3 as already sorted and you're going to compare this 3 with this and this so you're doing two comparison operators 
okay now what is going to happen is your uh three it will not be exchanged three will remain here but you will all doing the comparison okay next what you will do is you are taking four here and you are comparing with one this five so here one comparison you will do then at the end of this now the array will uh, now the loop will end how many comparisons have you made 4 plus 3 is 7 7 plus 2 is 9 9 plus 1 is 10 so totally 10 comparison is done okay that is how you do solve this using selection sort so option c 10 is the correct answer okay so while i'm starting to solve this question if you want to solve this as a mock test you can pause you can solve by yourself get the answer and then continue the video so c10 will be the correct answer second question let us go for it uh, is rajesh implements q as a singly linked list the new q has n elements now the time complexity to add a new element to the q is so what we are doing is we have a q and this q we know what is a q right so there is a q like this this is a q we will have something called as rare we will have something called as front here now this q is implemented as a singly linked list by rajesh okay now they are asking what is the time that is taken to add a new element to the q okay now we can do this in implement queues using linked list in two ways i think i may have repeated a similar question previously in our course but uh, we can uh, solve this to understand it okay so stack is also done in the similar ways here we are asking for queues now what happens here is i can put my front here and my rear here now since this is a queue every time i want to insert new element i have to come here and insert new element this is going to take some time so i can also do another thing okay so i can have my rear here and my front here now when i want to add a new element i will add a element in the beginning itself and move my rear here okay so elements are added at the rear end removed at the front end now when i want to remove the elements i should again loop through the arrays uh, linked list and come here and i have to remove this so any way you do either while removing either or either while and, uh, adding the element you have to traverse it okay so here we are if we consider this method o of 1 will be the answer because you just have to insert the element at the beginning and connect it here okay that is why option a o of 1 will be the answer most generally you will be doing it this way because you always want to add more elements to the queue and do operations but while removing you have to go to this so that is what is the answer option a o of 1 is the answer i hope you have got correct let us go for the next question of question 3 an integer x is saved as an unsigned 8 bit number what is x option a 22 option b 11 option c 10 option d 8 so the given number is 00001011 this is an unsigned integer now this means that it only has positive values okay if it was signed number then we had to look out for sign bit and then we had to you know take two's complements and what not and uh, worry about its representation which i have also covered in one of the previous questions in the course now since we have an unsigned integer we this is just simple binary decimal uh, binary to decimal conversion i can just number these okay so 8 plus 2 is 10 10 plus 1 is 11 directly you can just say 11 is the answer okay if it was signed then you have to look out for the sign and it was a little bit more complex but for this question it is very simple option b 11 is the answer okay so even in your examination they are not going to ask you very hard questions okay 
so there will be some hard questions there will be some easy questions some medium questions of all level they cannot only ask hard questions or not only ask easy questions that you have to remember now let us move on to the next question that is the fourth question what will be the output for the following pseudo code for n is equal to 2 so these are the options a4 b16 c2 d6 so this is the pseudo code integer fun integer n that means it returns an integer takes an integer so they are saying that when we give n values 2 here what is the answer if n equals to 4 it returns n else it returns 2 into fun of n plus 1 simple recursion question so initially you are passing 2 to this function the value of n is 2 so if n equal to 4 it returns n uh, otherwise it returns 2 into so it returns 2 into fun of n plus 1 so n is nothing but 2 2 plus 1 is 3 so whatever the value comes from here value that is returned by here it will multiply that with 2 and return okay now what is the value of f of 3 here we are passing n as 3 if n is equal to 3 now what happens here is if n equal to 4 it will return n otherwise what it is going to do is it will return 2 multiplied by f of n plus 1 that is nothing but f of 4 so that is nothing but f of 4 value here 4 is passed when n is equal to 4 return n so n value is 4 so it returns n so what is the value of n that is nothing but 4 so what is the value of f of 4 the value of f of 4 is nothing but 4 so 4 into 2 is nothing but 8 8 is returned here okay so f of 3 value is nothing but 8 so 8 into 2 16 is returned by this which is nothing but our option b so option b 16 is the answer just follow the traces let us go for the next question there is the fifth question of this video what will be the output of the following pseudo code for x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 6 option a 9 option b 18 option c 12 option d 7 for this code okay so integer fun integer x integer y if x is equal to equal to 0 return y else return fun of x minus 1 comma x plus y end function okay if you want to solve this you can pause that is how you have to do for all the videos okay you have to pause you have to solve and then look for the answer so let us try to solve this again similar fashion recursion just draw these out and you will be able to understand so initially what you are passing x is 3 and y is 6 is what you are passing so whenever you pass that if x value is 0 it is going to just return y otherwise it is going to return function of x minus 1 comma x plus y so what is going to return is function so this is going to return a uh, function of x minus 1 is nothing but x value is 2 2 minus 1 is 3 3 3 minus 1 is nothing but 2 comma x plus y x value is 3 x plus y nothing but 3 plus 6 that is nothing but 9 okay whatever the value comes out from this will be returned back okay so this value will be returned now here what happens here what we are passing is here we are passing 2 and 9 okay so whenever we are passing 2 and 9 again if x equal to 0 will return y x is 2 x is not 0 so it will return fun of x minus 1 comma x plus y that is nothing but f of 2 minus 1 comma 9 plus 2 that is nothing but 11 okay so this whatever the value comes from here it will be returned for now this will again call this function okay here the value is nothing but 1 and 11 will be passed now whenever the value is 1 and 11 what it will do is uh, it will call this again fun of x minus 1 that is nothing but f of 1 minus 1 is nothing but 0 x plus y 1 plus 11 that is nothing but 12 what does the value come from here will be returned now this will be called here we have 0 comma 12 whenever the x value is 0 it returns y so that is nothing but it, this returns 12 here so that 12 is again returned here 
and this 12 is returned here this 12 is returned here and the final answer is option c 12 simple recursion problem again you don't have to worry about anything just trace these out so option c 12 is the correct answer uh, let us move for the next question that is the sixth question which of the following is always true about the function area in which uh, in the given pseudo code so int area double radius it will take a radius as a input return pi into radius into radius pi r square that is nothing but the area of a circle okay so option a it returns the area of the circle within the limits of double precision it returns the area of a circle within the limits of constant pi it returns the area of a circle within the limits of the precision of double or constant pi whichever is lower option d none of the above now what they are asking here <coughs> so here we have a function which takes a argument called radius which is in double this is important now it is calculating pi into radius into radius here pi will be the value of pi that is nothing but 3.142 you can consider it up to any precision okay here we have considered it up to three precision points that is 3.142 you may consider it ne next value i am not <laughs> sure about the next value let us suppose that is 7 here the precision is 4 because you have 4 uh, numbers after dot here what they are asking is option a it returns the area of the circle within the limits of double precision so double will have some precision let us suppose float accepts 6 digits after dot that is the precision of float then double will have the precision of 12 okay it is not the actual number i'm just assuming this here they are saying it returns the area of the circle with the limits of double precision that is because radius is double the answer of pi is into radius into radius will also be in the form of double it may not be because read let us suppose double will have 12 precision you multiply this double with another double here that is what you are doing you are multiplying this then the output precision will be something else right it, will, it may not be 12 it will be greater than that also so that is why option a is not the answer let us see what option b says it says it returns the area of a circle within the limits of the constant pi so let us suppose i consider 3.1 as the value of pi so option b is saying that the answer will also be having only one digit after uh, this dot that is the wrong answer okay it is not in the uh, limit of constant pi let us see option c what is it saying it says it returns the area of a circle within the limits of precision of double or the constant pi whichever is lower now here this is saying that it will return the answer will be in the precision of this value radius or this pi whichever is lower so this has 12 and this has let us suppose pi will take as 3.1 so this has precision 1 now it is saying that one will be the precision which is also utterly wrong okay it totally depends upon the value of this radius that is why none of the above is the correct answer for this question option d none of the above is the correct answer okay to understand this you must know at least the basics of how data types and uh, multiplication addition of the same data type different data type works how type conversion happens when you multiply or add uh, variables of different data types there is something called as implicit implicit time type conversion explicit type conversion okay implicit is done by the compiler itself and uh, ex explicit you have to do it user has to do it or the programmer has to do it not user okay so that and all you need to understand okay that is all covered in our uh, c programming course as well as in data structures course you can refer that and for these kind of different pseudocode question you have to refer to our pseudocode material which is uh, shown in the website so that is it in this video thank you for watching online study for you keep watching our videos to prepare for interviews and examinations thank you